Today on TFL Bike, we are going to find out, is the Yamaha TW200 a roadworthy bike? Because already on our TFL off-road channel, we've taken this TW200 off-road. We took it on our hard off-road course there at the ranch. But today I wanna to find out, with only 196 cc's, is this a roadworthy bike? Can it keep up on the highway? So let's gear up and find out. Have you ever wondered what the coolest motorcycle ever made is? Well, I have a definitive answer for you. It's this 1970 Honda Trail 70 that our good buddy Andy Smith fully rebuilt for us. It's got a rebuilt engine, all kinds of new old stock parts on this bike, and we did an entire video series showing the rebuild and showing these bikes in action and what they're capable of. And now this bike is being auctioned to benefit Biker Down, a charity that benefits bikers and their families after an incident. So it's going to support a really great cause, and that's it's all thanks to our friends at Rider Justice. If you're interested in getting your hands on one of the coolest motorcycles ever made, head on over to tflbids.com right now. You don't have much time left. Uh, if you haven't already seen, this is our 2015 TW200 that we got for $4,100, which is a lot because this bike brand new retails for Four thousand seven hundred and ninety-nine. Still a carbureted 196 cc air-cooled thumper. Very simple engine. Very reliable. Ran about 16 horsepower. 11 pound-feet of torque. Five-speed transmission. And we'll talk a little bit more about the condition of this particular bike towards the end of the video, and our overall thoughts now that we've owned it for a couple weeks. But let's go ahead and get the bike on the road. So I've already got. The petcock turned on, ignition on, it's in run. And this bike is electric start, which is pretty nice. Um, one thing that is a little bit of an issue on this particular bike is that sometimes it doesn't want to stay idling. Right now it seems pretty happy. Um, and also you can see our chain here, it's very loose. We have new sprockets, new chain. So we're gonna replace that, do some work to this bike in terms of maintenance and a couple modifications in a video coming up very soon but let's go ahead and get moving on the tw200 now this particular bike we bought has got 3400 miles on it just over which is not bad i mean these are pretty tough motorcycles and at 3400 miles this feels like a brand new TW200. Everything on this bike works exactly the way you would want it to, exactly the way that you would hope. Um, the brakes work really nicely, suspension feels great, so it's an overall really nice condition bike. And this has got to be one of the easiest motorcycles to ride I've ever been on. Clutch, super light, super linear, Power is also super linear, very easy to get used to. Even if you've never been on a motorcycle before, this is one that you could just hop on and have no issue learning how to ride. It's also really comfortable because it's a good riding position. Our particular bike has some risers here on the handlebar to bring them up a little bit, which is nice. I'm sitting very upright, very comfortable. Um, the seat is plush enough. It's not as hard as a lot of dirt bike seats out there. Um, yeah, and the suspension, because it's off-road suspension, that's very soft. Our roads out here in Colorado are genuinely, miserably bumpy. They're very, very rough. And this bike makes them feel pretty smooth. Really, the most uncomfortable thing about this motorcycle so far has been that it's kind of screaming anywhere above 40 miles per hour it feels a little high strung it'll do a lot more than 40 miles per hour it can do supposedly uh, over 70 miles an hour we'll find out how it feels at higher speeds as soon as this light goes green um, it depends on how you have it geared but yeah top speed should be a little over 70 miles an hour which is enough to get by i think this is mostly ideal for around town riding uh stoplight to stoplight if you're not off-roading it, uh, realistically, this is a dual sport. It's an off-road bike 
first and foremost, but riding it around town is not really a problem at all. And right now with fuel prices the way they are, 78 miles per gallon claimed on this, it's pretty good. It's not as good as a lot of the Honda Mini Motos that we've tested, but 78 miles per hour, eh, 78 miles per gallon rather, is uh, nothing to shake your head at. It's pretty decent. Now, the light's about to go green, there we go. Ring it out. Yeah, it's not a fast accelerating bike by any means. But there we are in top gear 55, 60. Look at that, I'm catching up to this Tacoma in the left lane. Honestly, I mean, it's not comfortable at this speed. My hands are vibrating pretty violently. Uh, so. <laughs> It's not a phenomenal highway bike, but this is a lot better than something like a Trail 125 on the highway. I mean, at 55 miles per hour, I have enough power to pick up a decent amount of speed if I need to make a pass. So it's really not bad on the highway. It's better than I expected. Yeah, I would say better than the Trail 125, which is another motorcycle around this price. It's a little less expensive. Um, but I know a bike that some people cross shop with the TW200. So if some faster roads are uh, a part of your day-to-day -day ride, then this TW200 is probably going to be a better bike for you. Um, as compared to the 125, but it's definitely still not fast. Sounds okay for a thumper. It's not the worst sounding bike I've ever heard. Yeah, this is a nice thing to ride around town. I would have no problem commuting on this bike. It wouldn't make me feel too underpowered or too slow to keep up with traffic. This would be a perfect all-around beginner motorcycle for a lot of people, especially in a place like Colorado, where there's tons and tons of off-road trails. And if you want to see this bike riding off-road, check out our TFL Off-Road channel. So we did a video over at Tumbleweed Ranch where I rode this bike through our hard off-road course, which was, was, it was something. Um, the bike did actually pretty well considering a lot of what our course has turned into is mud and so I got stuck in the mud a lot. But um, on all of the more rock crawling style features in our off-road course this did phenomenally well because the seat height is so low and you can see I've got a good bend in my legs. Um, it just makes it a very approachable bike to ride on the dirt. There's some scuffs, scrapes, bruises on here, so we don't feel bad about dropping the bike. I dropped it twice when we took it to Tumbleweed, and I don't feel bad about it whatsoever. This bike looks proper with some scuffs and some scrapes on it, because it is a dual sport. We just rode it on the road, but at the end of the day, this is more of an off-road bike. That's what it's best at. So. All in all, I would say yes, this is in fact a functional on-road bike. You can use it to get around. I wouldn't ride cross country in it, not that you can't. It's just not the ideal bike for it. But uh, yeah, if you wanna see it off-road, really in its home turf, the kind of territory and terrain that this was designed to take on, like I said, check out TFL Off-Road. You can see the video of me riding it through our course, getting it muddy. So yeah, stay tuned and let us know in the comments what kind of things you would like to see featured about this bike on the channel. We're happy to listen to some feedback, so let us know and we'll see you guys in the next video.